Hey, what's up, YouTube? So, got me a little cobbler's hammer from the antique store. And I've done a couple of videos on refurbing these. So, this one I'll edit down so it's pretty fast. But, um, just going to clean this up with the wire wheel, just like I did the other one. I don't like how short this one is. I want it a little bit longer. Not much, just like an inch or two. So I'm going to cut this quite a bit longer than the length of the handle so that I'll have waste on both ends to mark my offset centers in. Then I'll get back and we'll talk about offsetting the centers and all that stuff. First thing we're going to do is get this thing in the lathe and we're going to turn it round. I'm going to turn slightly larger than one inch round in the center of this thing. And then we're going to come back and measure our offsets from there. Now, we need to look at the grain. If this were a big framing hammer I was making a new handle for, I would worry about the grain direction. These mallets, they're not a heavy hitter kind of mallet, so grain direction's not outrageously important. But, I don't want, when I wedge it, I don't want it to split down into the handle. So normally I run my wedges this direction. This time I'm going to run it that way just to try it out. That's the way this one was done. So I don't want my wedge to go the same direction as the grain. So we'll turn the head sideways to the grain. So what that means is that my offsets need to go these directions here, this direction here. I've got three quarters of an inch, but between center and edge. And I want plenty of meat to grab, so I'm going to meet that right in the middle. Do the same thing on the other end. Now, when you first drive your centers, if you do it the way that one of mine got off a little bit, so to rule out that error, measure off of the center hole, not the edges. And that'll that'll take care of any error from when you were driving your centers because your cylinder is lined up on these centers. The very corner of these two blades is hanging off the edge here. So technically this thing doesn't have a full grip. So I'm gonna take nice light cuts and I'm gonna back the speed down one notch on this thing and the first time I started I'm gonna step out of the way so I'm gonna turn this first side down until this ridge that it creates lines up with about the center of that block What I'm aiming for here is these ridges that I'm making, I want them to meet, and as soon as they meet, I'll stop. Alright, so we got this as close as we can get it without eating too far into it. So, the ridge is really good on this side, it's a little bit fatter back here, and on this side, you can see that discrepancy there. But, we're about to put it back on centers, so that's going to 
start to disappear a little bit. And there's going to be little thin pieces of this flying off when I hit this with the skew chisel. So again, 